first of all, take this moment to arrive right here, right now, and as you say, put the day behind you and not even think about leaving because you're already here. So um, I'm giving your mind's permission to, uh, to, to have some downtime and some quiet. And um, something that my previous meditation teacher before our present one said once upon a time, listen as if your ear is here where your heart is. So I just invite you to experiment with that one just as a way of just letting the mind be and just letting things wash in. And, um, yeah, I'm, I, they do call me Laura Lovehearts. My married name is actually Laura Clifton. Hello, welcome. <laughs> um, but they call me Laura Lovehearts. It started when I was a Montessori nursery teacher and the children started calling me Laura Lovehearts and asked me why I had love hearts here, there and everywhere. And it was a great opportunity to talk about the happy heart and when you're feeling happy and when you're not. And they started calling me Laura Lovehearts and it stuck. And then it even slid onto the book through the, pub, the lovely company Spiffing Covers who did the book for me. So thanks to them for that. So yes, um, in addition to, um, I think it started way, way back that I had this fascination with the heart and what it meant. And I even played the Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz when I was younger. And so I've always been seeking a, a heart. So um, it's no surprise that my meditation is a heart-centered meditation called, called Heartfulness. And that actually stepped in to anchor my passion for trying to live in the moment and I'm very grateful to Heartfulness for doing that for me and myself and my husband have been practicing that for 20 years and there are other people here that have practiced that also so um, uh, I'd like to say thank you for that but my ma the main moment for me that started this passion for trying to live in the moment happened over 25 years ago when I was at a talk in the Royal Philosophical Society in Edinburgh. And they were doing a talk on Satchitananda, existence, consciousness and bliss. And at that time I didn't know anything about these things and we had the opportunity to do a little activity um, to bring us into that moment. And my activity was to dust the pantry. And it was a Victorian pantry, it was all white, there was nothing in there and it was just all painted white. And I just had to dust. And somewhere in amongst everything they'd said, I found a moment in time where everything just opened up. Everything went very, very quiet in a world inside me that was rampantly busy. And for this sudden moment in this white room, I did feel almost bliss because things did stop. And I thought, ah. Oh, Things could be very, very different in my inner world. And so from that point on, I started seeking that experience again, where everything came to a point of peace. And um, I was really um, very grateful for that opportunity, and it's just continued to, to call to me to experiment in different ways how to be present in the now uh, through to a point of realising well there, that's only a concept even now is only a concept it's not like I can fix it to this moment in, in any conceptual way and my love of words started in the theatre when I was a stage manager and being in rehearsals with actors especially even in Shakespeare I suddenly started to understand what it meant and they brought the words to life and when I was running performances in the evening and there was the lights to say LXQ and sound cue, bringing everything together to bring that perfect moment, to bring that atmosphere, to bring a reality to people, to experience and I was just fascinated by that and that was when I had the opportunity to spend time with Tom McGrath a very yet reputable um, musician and writer playwright in Scotland sadly passed now 
and he asked me to work with him on some writing workshops and he became my mentor. So I started writing way back then, about 25 years ago, with him. And he encouraged me to carry on. And so I did, off and on. And then moments just started to happen to me. This, this experience, it was a whole experience. In fact, this book took seven years from start to finish to complete. Because to start with, the first piece which I shall read to you happened to me just after a writing class and I arrived home and the whole piece just wrote itself and I haven't changed a single word and it made me start looking at the inner world and the outer world and the interplay of that in a very different way in terms of living in the moment. So I'd like to read just a few of the pieces and then we can have a little chat. I don't know, Paul, if you want to have a seat. So, hello late people, hello, hi, thanks for coming, hi. So this first piece, can everybody hear me all right? It's called Dancing Like Diamonds. Your words landed like lanterns, lighting up my heart. Three little words woke me, almost choked me, startling me back to life. It was like you asked me to marry you, and I said, yes. Words, dancing like diamonds out of the silence, crisp and crystal clear, cut into shapes that I could hear. I was delighted, excited, ignited, like a sprite in the night, whirling, twirling, swirling into the air with flair. Words can make people stare. Beware, compare, despair. Where would we be without words? Sublime in silence, still in subtle surrender. Oceans of celestial silence, spouting, spurning, source of secrets. Mix them together for a cocktail or two. Words and silence, silence and words. A little bit of this and a little bit of that. A splish, splash, crash, and shh. Shopping for words like shopping for chocolate. Shh. Words, wondering which way to go. Up, down, and round about. Sing, dance, and shout about. Twiddling, sizzling, singing their song. With different tunes on every tongue. Seen or heard. Dispelling, compelling, discerning, concerning. Destruction, construction, language, learning, leaping into life, stories unspoken, stifled expressions seething, unheard in a world of words, waiting, anticipating, silently standing, seeding, perhaps even pleading for fresh air and freedom, lost in despair or lit up with glare, Words real, reveal, relive, and forgive. They can make you weak at the knees, please you, tease you, squeeze you, squash, crush, and cradle, destable, distract, contact, connect, and protect. They quite freely attack you or wash away your tears and fears, show off your years, strip you and trip you, trick or treat you, Beat you, meet and greet you. Words wither, dither, slither, quiver, flow like a river. Remember reminders? Reminders remember. Words click, clack and stack. Smack at us, choke us, joke with us, smoke with us. Words whistle and wander, go way over yonder. They yowl, yodel, doodle and dawdle, draw you near. Whisper in your ear so you can hear before they quite simply just disappear. What was it you said? You love words, don't you? The moment I said yes, we were married, words and I. Yes, I do, it's true, I do love you. I even want to marry you. I do, I do, I do. Oh, words, will you be my wife, my life, my trouble and strife? 
join me where silence is golden and embolden on our bands, which we shall e'er wear upon our hands, those three fine words, I love you. Conceptualise. <laughs> there are moments I avoid looking at you. It's true, I do. Do you know I do, or do you do it too? Other times I let myself look, even catch the hook of your look. And then there are moments when you talk to me across the room with your eyes. Whole stories sometimes, rhymes glistening like chimes. Once your eyes widened like windows and I fell in. Once you watched tears fall to my chin. Tears pulled up from deep within, watching my windows being washed. Time after time your eyes catch mine, and I wonder willingly towards you, all the while wondering if I have the will to wander off, to set myself free. Still, sometimes I am willful and I will not wander to where I can only wander. Other times, yours meet mine on the move, or stray away, sometimes to call another day, when they wink a wave my way, or blink a brighter gaze into the haze. They can't always disguise lies or what lies inside, once or twice, and it was rather nice, like sugar and spice. You saw me, the me in mine. I may never know what's low down and yonder in yours, under the glow of what's on show. What will they give away one day, free or at great cost of getting well and truly lost? Will they stay, say that they can stay, never stray, stare, show we care, bear what we share, but please don't look through me as if I were not there? Some day, yours may say, Hey, are you pleased to see me, or are you just trying to tease me? Which wouldn't please me, because your teases taunt me. Mine might bite, undress you out of spite with the eyes of a spy. When we greet, when they next meet, will I feel in some way complete? Or just know you're a cheat, on heat, or I'm just way off beat? Maybe they will simmer when we glimpse a glimmer of what once simmered. Or they may look sharp, dash, dart, crash and close so as not to expose. Who knows? Now my eyes are closed. I can't even look. Can't see those kind of eyes that took me by surprise. Now they are hidden, no matter which way I look. If I open my eyes now, and yours want to shower me with gifts, don't forget my lips. <laughs> this next one is an ode to chocolate. And I'm sure we can all tune in <laughs> to those moments when we're eating chocolate, or perhaps you don't like chocolate, but this is my ode to chocolate. Were you? Well, here you can have a good dose then. Hmm. Chomping chocolate, chomping chocolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where? In a rare treat, restreat. In a seat to a beat. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Chomp. Chilled for more chomp. Melted for more. Mmm. Mindfully melted into a medley of Moorish moments mashing to mush, musing on meltdown. Miraculously milky, decidedly dark, white if you might like a lighter bite. Marbled, bubbled, splendid bliss, nutty, fruity, spicy swirls. Chipped, chopped, dripped, dropped. Cleverly curled, flatteringly frilled, flattened or even patterned. There are some who hate it, Berate it, grate it, spit or split it, share it, slide it, and even hide it. Others prefer to pop it like a pill, if you will. 
meditating on medicating moments. Doctor's orders. Who said? He said, I said. And who is he? He is me. So I feel free to take it with a drop of tea. I say. Twice a day, if I may, a block or two or three or more, depending on what's in store. It's never a chore to explore, or a bore, not something to endure, but merely a door. Girdled into gutsy guts by glances of its golden girdle, treats trapped in wrap, triumphantly toying with taste buds, stripped strong and silent, taunted by type. Momentary madness mixed with a tinge of sadness once all is said and done, for when it's done and gone, it's done and gone. Boxed or block, both get the chop, then at a drop, off you pop to the shop. Disciplined days stash away surviving supplies to smooth and soothe. Tempting treats trample on diets, diabetes and other obscure diseases. Nonetheless, it teases and pleases. Or, it's back off to the shop for the chock. Refilling, refueling, repeating prescription. Conviction in its cure. Lured day and night. Senses take flight to a glorious height. Loving lips lick at lumps and chunks. Fanciful frivolity or jovial jollity, drugged in delirious delight, all owed to charming chocolate. So I think we might, perhaps a few moments you might recognise in here, just from a sprinkling of rather a few all packed into one. And this is Reflections on Love. So, So, reflections on love. Tiptoe, 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 towards the land of love. Is there any way of knowing if that's exactly where we're going? Will we rise above tastes of tantalising transcendental states? Sidle past seduction's gates, be present to every present state. Stop jumping at the bait and wait the wait. Take it date by date, yet not wait till it's too late. Take times of test and tolerance. Hang on till hormones hangover is dead and gone. Dare we deny denial, dust off delirium and date with delight. Not just take flight to such a great height that we might fall from each other's sight. Does delusion add to the confusion? Or does fashion simply add to the passion? Will we dilly-dally down every alley or tiptoe to the line? Cross it, together, whatever the weather, inside and out. Should we draw a line? Should we stop reading between them? Can control confer clarity and cradle us? Or otherwise label and destable us? languishing as one might in the mire of aggression, confession and obsession, locked in the confusion of control's profession. Or let us learn from the profusion of its profession. Dare we dine, drink of life's wine, pine, shine, throw each other a lifeline? Or does dealing with feeling deal such a frozen feeling that it states the fate of something not worth stealing. Choosing to freeze, so we don't even, we can't even sneeze without needing to please. Negating niceties, so we don't even care to care or share. Stuck in being so aware to beware or take care that we just stop and stare. Does fear flare? Dependency dash? Do we dance in a trance or only give glance at giving us half a chance? Can calm companionship, compassion and commitment call? Or once again will we stall and fall? Are we interested to encourage 
nourish and flourish, have the courage, find a way to grow, show, know when to let go. Are we strong enough to say no, or even give it a go? Should we wink and blink in infatuation's haze, oblige obsession's oppression and possession with a short gaze, accept the days when we craze, try trust over torture, turn to tenderness in place of temptation's face, forget flippant flirts which stir up the dirt, to flirt freely with freedom's future. Let's glare at the green-eyed monster until he steps aside, for he may try to take us for a ride. Let's not hide, hold our heads up with pride, but not stand so tall, it hurts when we fall. Can you look me in the eye and say it's okay to cry? Let's let love's lessons present its presence. Let's let words wander and wander unedited, away from the critics' criticism, cynicism and mysticism. Shall we sense sensitivities over sensitivity? Do feel free to dispel my fears, my years of desertion, perversion, prevent, pretense and coercion. Won't you believe I don't have tricks up my sleeve? I don't want to stamp on your style, try to crimp or cramp you. I just want to stand by your side a while. Or to see if we set off to see just you and me, if it frees us to find what's all in the mind. Let's hope we find our hearts are entwined, anchored in the land of love, where we can sing our love song and do away with the swan song. Do you feel something? Or have I analysed until I've paralysed? <laughs> Just going to do this last one here before we maybe have a few question and answers. Oops. So this one is called Let It Be. Finally, I can sit here in praise of all those moments when I just am and can be, be me, everything that I can be when I leave myself to be. Be free, free to be natural and naturally me. When I see not what I want to see, but see things just as they are, a star being a star, like a car is just a car and not a star that is some wondrous way off sparkling avenue flooded with streams of dreams. Be clear enough to hear, not what I want to hear, but what is really quite clearly here, there and everywhere, when no means no, and snow means snow, frozen vapour falling from the sky in flakes, not snuffle soft floating scented snow white feathers sent from heaven. To hear with my inner ear those fine threads of words which appear from place to place, which speak with a clear cheer of truth, a truth that quietly and quite naturally calls from that graceful place called space, inner silent space, far from the muddle and the madness of a mind that finds itself miles from the heart of the matter, from every matter for that matter, mentally mastering the mind, not so as to be on mastermind, but to be able to calmly find what I need to find, creatively connecting and calling into the chasm which can be controlled despite churning and yearning, reclaiming that central centrepiece of the heart when circling out of control amongst self-created catastrophes, confused colours and cultured companions all carved out of nothing and nowhere. Smelling what is to be smelt, nose to the nappies, not necessarily neatly nestled in beds and buckets of roses, nose to toes, isn't that how reality goes? To feel what I feel without making a big deal, just keeping it real, 
not flirting with feelings so far that they are so far-fetched, etched like grooves on a record, etched till they're too hard to remove, feelings that just are, when they are, where they are, not just because I think they are, leaving moments to reveal what they want to reveal, not frivolously furnishing them with flowers for hours, just leaving them be, to be what they have to be, with no word from me. Mindful for a moment, in the moment, of the moment's rights. It might be, if needs be, it needs to be free to be a moment of nothing. Nothing more, nothing less. There's nothing wrong with nothing and nothingness. There's something I can't quite express about the marvellous nature of nothingness. It's just, it's, it's not just its lack of restlessness. Now I'll bow out in good grace to allow this space to fill with space, invisible space, graceful air space, to fill with nothing but nothing and nothingness. So there's nothing wrong <laughs> with a bit of quiet, is there? <laughs> yes, Bill. I enjoyed it very much. Um, I was very interested in the style you used. You said you used not the type of alliteration. Yeah. Rhyming, but yeah. Perhaps, where did you get that style? Is it a recognised style? Or did you no. It no, it just happened, actually. And it's been... Um, for the book, I don't think it, it helps to sell it or anything like that because it just isn't a genre there is nothing like it anywhere um, but I think the whole beat and rhythm of it and the whole wording of it was what helped it to 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 be because they kind of felt like raindrops to me if I didn't carry a book with me or something to write them down I lost them and they happened just in a moment. So it was like the resonance of the, in nature, everything's got rhythms and beats. It's almost like that was all encapsulated to help me capture them. And um, I kind of tried to turn a bit of a blind eye to it at first, thinking that's just m contrived or made up. But it wasn't like I chose to do it it just happened and it was almost what it was just a joy because it was like play and perhaps I've never had that much play and that's my place to play with words that and because I had found how exciting they are because they're just not the dictionary definition each you know once I was going over it I would look at things in the dictionary I might look in the thesaurus to see if there was something else but then I learnt that the words hold so much more than just the words and it's the feeling and all the, the words seem to have those, they do have their natural rhythm so I had to go with it and, and I started to enjoy it and, and, and I learnt a lot of words in, in the meantime and I was actually classed as dyslexic in my early 20s and I've got a very slow reading rate and to do the book, I actually had to learn a lot about grammar and relearn a lot of things. So um, they were, they're like starting blocks for learning the words and I built round them. Um, so they've, they've taught me a lot. But a good question, because I had meant to say, there is a little bit at the beginning of the book after I've invited people to read it as if there's a periscope coming up from the heart just to let things wash in. There is a bit that sort of does say, um, let me just, I'd like to read it out to you. Um, it says, um, where are we? Just a, so, let's go. Get on with the show, go wherever the flow wants to go. Forbid resistance to rhyme, reason or rebellion. Stop any fuss over broken rules and regulations. Simply be, 
look out, look in, freely feel the feelings, merge in each moment, moment by moment. So that was kind of my encouragement for people to let go of any... It's almost like a prejudice. I had the same. I had to, almost a prejudice and a judgment against my own writing. And I had to... I had lots of layers of self-doubt and all sorts of things to peel off in allowing it to, to come together and taking it step at a time. Did yep. You, you had a lesson, and then that's when you wrote your first piece. So what happened in that lesson? Did he teach... Like no, the, I had I'd been in lots of writers' workshops before this particular e event came along, and I hadn't been writing for quite some time. And then I heard about a little workshop that was happening in an inner city in in, in Edinburgh, in an inner city community centre, and there was a whole variety of people there. And it was a very simple gathering. I think it was the person. Um, Margaret Christensen, an amazing facilitator of workshops, and what she did that evening was just bring it, bring my love of it back to life. And it's that first piece. She drove me home because it was a, a rough area, dropped me outside the door, and said, "You love words, don't you?" And then that piece just went, "Yes, I do." And she did that for, for me. She, it was what she gave. Does so. anybody else like to share anything or ask anything? Yes. Writer's block. How do I overcome writer's block? Oh, I. Uh, well, what. I've said to shared with other people about my experience of, of, of that is um, I really don't th I don't think it's something that you can force. I think if you've got something that you need to write, as opposed to what you that you want to write, it's it's different. So um, if you need to write something, it's creating that place, time, and space to to get it done and setting that intention and maybe setting a bit of time aside getting the right environment where you can do it somebody suggested to me recently it's better to go to a place where uh, a cafe where other people are are there just to help you focus it that it, ju it just does that um, but for me I, I like to break it down into bite-sized pieces um, and being a bit dyslexic and maybe having a bit of ADHD and a wild mind, I've had to break it down into pieces, hence there's 60 pieces in that book. And other books that I have written are also in compartments, and I like to see it like a string of pearls, that they all are on a thread that you can then create into a necklace um, it, with a finished piece. So I have a trouble, if I was to write um, a novel, I think I would have a terrible time trying to create that flow because there's so much information. But it's always just like taking um, a step at a time, really, I find, and just doing it in bite-sized pieces. And doing it when it wants, if it, if it wants to happen, if it wants to come through, is like catching it there and then and not just going like that, I'll do it later. Because that's how it happens for me. It just c comes, and I have to catch them there and then, and then perhaps go back and work with them. I don't know if that helps at all, but I'm happy to to speak to you, because I think it's quite an individual process, and I think it depends what you're writing. So, good luck. <laughs> Yeah, th it's the interpretation, isn't it? It's different people's interpret how they might interpret if they were going to write it. I mean, lo love to me, love is love is love. It's like the centre, the, the most subtlest of subtle things ever. Um, and it's something that you can only really feel. But how you express it or try and put it over, everybody is going to. And And maybe it works for some people to to say, look at that, the radiance of that 
um, daffodil and look at the hue, doesn't it make things, make you open up and feel something? For some people it might work like that, to express it like that. But I think it is a very, I mean, how you say to somebody, I love you, it's not, you're not going to say it unless you really feel it. I think it's the feeling that comes through. So that, those words that you choose would have to reflect a feeling. So how I would choose to, to bring that around. I've, there's a couple of pieces in, this, in, in moments. One's called Imagine and the other one's called Imagine Too, which it really talks about how imagine if we were to send love across the intend it and send it would it go through the ether and actually get there? And there is that thing of, like, you, you have to have love in action. I mean, even if I sent love over to the other side of the world, is it going to fill somebody's belly with food? Probably not. It might fill his soul on some level, but only if a fellow being on the other side of the world had the loving heart to take that, that fellow person some food, would it fill him... On a, on a very physiological level, so it's um, it's a big it's a big question, and a, but very simple at some some levels. But uh, but yeah, no, I'm glad you enjoyed that piece because it is um, it could be said to be as complex as as paralyzing as the piece itself. But <laughs> lies to love, par yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so easy to do that. Yeah in a, any relationship, on any level, on any topic, you know, overanalyze until you're paralyzed instead of just being and being present. We bought some free magazines as well from the uh, Heart from this Meditation. Yeah. There's a lot of discussion on the nature yeah. of love. Yeah. yeah the whole, that whole practice, our whole practice on heartfulness is about love and becoming love, so it is a big... It's a big topic, and <laughs> freeing the heart up to love is yeah. meditation, isn't it? Yeah. Heart meditation. Mm -hmm. So do we've got quarter of an hour before Watkins closes? So do feel free to have a browse. I will be here and signing books if anybody would like one. And there's also information about heartfulness meditation. And there's one or two facilitators here from Heartfulness if anybody wants to talk to them about it. It's a free practice and it, it offers um, a relaxation and a meditation. So um, I find it's um, something that allows me to keep learning and growing. So, um, Can you describe the practice? It's a heart-centred meditation. Um, It really, for, for me, I can only speak for me, it's allowed me to try to regulate my mind and put that aside so that I can be guided by my own heart and understand myself because it has allowed me to, 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 to stop, go within and explore that space and change my whole relationship with myself and with other people. Um, and to start with, there is a relaxation that you can do because it's easier to meditate when your body is relaxed and you're comfortable and also then when your mind is relaxed. It's not um, a practice that uses a, um, a, gu a guided meditation as such, which is a, a stepping stone um, because it gives your mind something to do, but ultimately this practice allows you to still the mind and regulate it so that then you can, be, you can be guided from your own self in any direction. So if you need to do something for your physical well-being, you're, you know what's right for you in, in any one direction. So there is a practice that we do in the, in the morning, and it, and it does help to expand the consciousness as well as um, developing love. And, um, and then you can take that into your day. There's a lot that's given within the practice which helps you with your daily life and how to live moment to moment in the choices that you make, how to centre yourself and come from your heart instead of your head. 
And then in the evening, there's a cleaning meditation that we can do where it, you can clear off anything that you've picked up in the day, stresses, strains. And on a bigger level, you can clear off tendencies of your own patterns and habituations and conditioning, and it helps you to clear that off over time. So there's, there's, there's quite a lot to it, but um, I'm very grateful to it because it's been a lifesaver for me and it's been a real anchor. And, and I feel like I have got a heart finally, so I'm very happy with that. <laughs> but um, yeah, the guys are probably better at explaining. But you can go to heartfulness.org. Um, there's plenty of things on YouTube about heartfulness, and there's lots of facilitators. We have um, people in nearly 100 countries in the world practicing. 130 countries now practicing and 250 centers across the, the globe. And uh, our teacher is traveling wild, widely and people are taking it into schools, colleges, organizations, and it's really doing a lot of good for a lot of people. So. Mm. Oh, thank Hi. you for coming. <laughs> thank you. Laura, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank That's you for your uh, big heart and your oh, um, you. vast courage. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and thank you for coming. So yeah. um, Laura's going to be around to sign books and answer any personal questions yeah. for the next 15 minutes. And uh, yeah, we'll yes. see you again sometime. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you for coming, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you.